What's up, friendos, and welcome back to Leading Off a Brand New Week. And no Joe, that's right, it's Welsh and the Bogman, Scott Bogman in the house as Joe is recovering from WrestleMania. That's right. Oh, that's pretty good. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you're fire. Yeah. <laughs> no one I just realized, man these days. Yeah. I just realized as I said that maybe that's not the best uh, <laughs> voice to be able to do. But what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you guys for hanging out and welcome in. We got a lot to cover. We're going to be covering all the weekend stuff. I got a brand new trade video, which we're going to be talking about. We've got our best bets. Bogman, I was on an absolute tear. I don't know. I, I'll tell you. It was good enough, my bet streak, to have multiple internal Fantasy Pros people hit me up about like, hey, do you have a quick link? And hey, what's your username? Because we're going to promote you. All this, <laughs> all these new followers. I, I went from like 100 followers on the Betting Pros app to over 300 in, in like 12 Excellent. hours. Saturday, they all came. Great day. Screeching halt on Sunday. Absolute screeching halt. My wow. uh, my eight day, technically nine day streak went with lots of units and just absolutely <laughs> waxed yesterday, Box. Uh, yeah, this reminds me of the advent calendar and Bad Santa when he like opens it up and it's at he's like aspirin. He's like, well, it can't all be winners, can they? OK, yeah. <laughs> all right. You know, uh, some days, you know, Sundays are, are uh, for the boys, they say Sundays are for fab instead of winning bets maybe but uh you are on a heater Was. so i would absolutely be following the welsh uh and following along on his bets well we'll see we'll see if we can pick it back up looking forward to it and if you guys want always know that our episodes are brought to you by leading off is presented by bet 365 that's right go and check them out today because you can bet five bucks and get 150 bucks in bonus bets. They got a thousand dollars safety net on first bets and bonus bets. Oh my, you get to choose your offer. You get to get rocking. You can tail us, tail whoever, get your own bets set, whether it's props or whatever. Go and check them out at bet365. Promo code leading off, our wonderful sponsor here at leading off. So, Boggs, by the way little bit of an eclipse today are you are you of the like that like chaos is going to ensue or do you just want to like stand out with the minions and just watch the sun get blocked for like 12 seconds no i, I, I want to watch it it's uh it's a cool event uh, i'm you know i'm in texas now so i'm like right in the path of it so i'm gonna Ooh, what do they call that don't they have a name they're like it's like the path of yeah, it's, it's right? where the rapture is. So <laughs> it's somewhere right there's there. like something yeah, yeah. they have like a specific name for it. I'll get nothing. It's the here. eclipse path. Yeah, oh, okay. I'll um, get nothing in Arizona. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting, but rain, lots of rain mm -hmm. on the horizon today. So there is a possibility oh, it's I like get the rain event out. horizon. I think that's what yeah. it's I think what it's called, like event horizon. The event horizon is With a Sam no Jackson. Black hole, oh. So uh but uh but well, yeah, it's it's not an eclipse. So event horizon is for the black hole. But uh, yeah, the um, oh, it, well, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, uh, but it, it is going to be interesting. I'm excited about it. Hopefully it means that uh, maybe it'll be reverse day and my bets will finally hit today. So uh, that's what we're hoping for. That would be sweet. All right. We're going to get into all the stuff. Totality. That is it. Go cards. Got it. It is the path of totality. That is the name that it has been given. Uh, I'll have none of it today, but, and I'll be in a meeting, so I won't be able to check it out, but I hope you guys <laughs> all enjoy your path of totality today. And hopefully Joey is doing the same coming they off moved of WrestleMania. The, they moved the Yankee game back because of it. I saw uh, that. Yeah. You know, uh, four hours. So it was going to be weird. You know, uh, here comes Aaron Judge up to bat, and the whole stadium is dark. Look at that. that I actually wish weird. they would have done it because then we could have had like, um, we could have just had like a whole season of weird anomalies. Like, I love that one where it was Glaber Torres just batting through the earthquake. If you see that video where when the earthquake was going on, he was taking BP and he just never stopped. I just want like disastrous events for players to just keep playing through. We had the snow game the other day. Oh, yeah. Well, Remember, it looked like the apocalypse when they had the wildfires near Oakland and everything was red in the background. That was crazy. I do, yeah, I do actually remember. But like I said, uh, we get into the stuff. Shout out to Cody Rhodes and Joe, uh, who are best friends or whatever. And I know he's excited that the uh, story is finished and WrestleMania and all the chaos that went on. We'll probably hear all about it tomorrow as Joe went to both days. But let's talk about some baseball. We got some fantasy baseball. All your favorite pitchers are gone all your play favorite players are gone over the weekend since we last talked to you i don't think we had all of these we have some finality we lost 
Spencer Strider, which is brutal. It's absolutely brutal. We lost Shane Bieber. Confirmed Shane Bieber, um, Tommy John, not confirmed Tommy John for uh, Spencer Strider. UCL injury. Uh, the other big injury, and I'm throwing these all in here, is Luis Robert, because we now have about a three-month timeline, even potentially four, with a severe hip flexor. So, Bog, uh, I mean, how are, how are you managing? Like, is I don't know if there's anything to take away. There's, there's uh, yeah, of course, about the pitching side and all these guys getting hurt. We lost Garrett Cole. Strider's going to be out. Strider's a cut at this point. He's probably it's probably inevitable to Tommy John. It's not worth hanging on to unless you've got ILs. Bieber is done. God knows what's going to go on with Cole. And then you throw on top of it, Lou Bob, which is going to be two to three months. And really, there was even some discourse around like how much could or if or will he play at all this season with where the White Sox are heading. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look good for the White Sox. Crochet has been great. But other than that, you know, and they lost Lou Bob and Eloy, you know, not as severe, obviously, but he just went on the IL as well. So you pull like the two best power bats out of that lineup and um, uh, it was already bad and now it's really bad. So, uh, it's a tough break and strider too. I mean, I don't know. Something has to be done. Maybe they do need to scrap the pitch clock. I don't know, but you can't keep having star pitchers, not playing full seasons or in crunch time when it matters the most or whatever. It is insane. Uh, you just do you think can't... it's, do you think it's about the, uh, the pitch clock? Do you really truly think the know. pitch clock is the cause? I have no idea. I don't think that that's the cause. I know the MLBPA uh, seem to think that that's the cause and it, you know, there is correlation. I have no idea if it is causation, but, uh, something needs to be fixed. We can't keep losing all these pitchers, but I mean, they're not going to change it. You know, numbers are up and all that stuff. So I guess we just have to, we're gonna have to switch back to six man rotations or seven man rotations or something like they just, there needs to be an adjustment so that we quit losing these pitchers and no adjustments going to, you know, baseball is the, always the last to adjust. So none of that stuff is going to happen. Um, it's going to take a while for teams to get creative or, you know, pitchers coming up through the minor leagues will start to get used to it because this is the process. It's just not the process for the guys that have pitched already. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I no think it's actually, I, can I, see. I think it's a perfect storm. I don't think it is yeah. one thing. I think everybody, like I see, like, I think it's no uh, go cards in here is like, no, it's the pitch effort. It's the max pitch effort. And then there's Might some be. people, it's the pitch clock. I think it's all of the things. I, I don't think it is one specific thing. I think sure. it is the combination of these ingredients that are creating an explosive injury bug. I think it is max effort with the way these guys are approaching, even training, uh, not just like from a max effort on the mound and the training. And then you take on pitch clock with, you know, no ability to um, to have any rest in between or just I, I mean, you take on top of it also pitch selection in the, the type of pitches. I, I'm watching a lot of guys talking about you know, how they're throwing and the certain type of pitches they're throwing and what it does to their arm. Tyler, there's a great video of Tyler Glass now talking about how uh, even pitch grip, there's the other one, was like spider tack in the way that they're having to hold the ball causing. I think, so I think it's just a, it's a combination of all of these things. But uh, as I'm going to discuss in a trade video I've got coming up, which should be posted in the next like 24 hours, is you're, I think you're going to have two things that are going to happen in your league. I think you're going to have people that are going to grip as tight as they possibly can, like they don't have spider tack onto their starting mm -hmm. pitchers in their league. And they will be so difficult to trade for. You're going to have the inverse. You're going to have teams and fantasy owners that are just going to be like, whatever, I got to get off of these guys. I got to get off the top guys and I got to be able to capitalize on two for ones and three for ones and stuff like that. And I don't really know exactly how to give the best advice because I think it literally it, leagues are going to be split like that. I don't think there's right. going to be a lot of middle. I think it's going to be grip, hold tight to your starting pitchers or be more willing to move them. What Which means not you? a lot changes, right? Like, because you have yes. half the crowd overreacting one way, half the crowd overreacting the other way. It's probably going to be about the same, which is but what, but what side are why you nothing on? changes. We got something has to change here. So, you know, say but what's, what side are you? on that are you going to hold tighter or do you want to no, move off of your starters? i'm absolutely not i i don't know that i want to move off my starters but i i'm much more willing to trade them at this point because they're just all getting hurt so yeah i'm more willing to trade my pitchers right now man i think i you might be right i might be a little bit more like myself like you were saying like not a lot of changes i think like the tippy top <laughs> guys i'm not willing to trade as much but um you know here's the funny thing 
the guys that I love the most are the guys that I think are maybe at least susceptible to a lot of these injuries are these like command based pitchers. I love George Kirby. I love Logan Webb. Like I think those are the safety guys. Those are the guys that I want to go acquire. And luckily some of them are struggling right now. So they're acquirable. So those would probably be the guys that I move, but I think like middle line pitching I'm willing to capitalize on. Garrett Crochet, Jared Jones, guys that are popping. Maybe they're free and you should kind of hold tight to them filling out your roster. But if someone's willing to uh, pay a king's ransom, it's something I would think about. Another one of those guys, maybe that's starting to pop up, is Ronel Blanco, who was great again. He had another like five innings of no hit. He allowed one hit, four walks, over six shutout innings. I think he went another five. He had just five swing and misses, though, 90 pitches. CSW of 27%. It's okay, but he hasn't given up a run. He's got a 0.47 whip, an 11, uh, 11 to 6K to walk ratio if they're 15 innings. Do you think Ronel Blanco is the real deal? I mean, I don't know that a guy with two really good starts at 30 in his first 10 starts here at 30, by the way, uh, is the real deal Holyfield, but he's on a nice hot streak. There are way worse things than rostering on El Blanco and having it blow up in your face. It's, it's, you know, everyone has been, uh, you know, a victim of this. So yeah, add him, uh, pay up for him, uh, keep him on your roster. And when he eventually tanks, like I'm sure you also think Welsh, then drop him, but ride the wave. He's on a heater right now. So I'll take it. Rank, uh, Garrett Crochet, Jared Jones and Ronel Blanco. The, the way you said them. Jared Jones over Garrett. Cro well, okay. Are there tier differences? Uh, I would say Jones and Crochet and then a lot and then Blanco. Okay. I, I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I, are you heavy? You're heavy Jared Jones over Garrett Crochet though. I don't know that I'm heavy. I mean, I'm always heavy, but I don't know that I'm heavy. Uh, you know, Cro uh, Jones over Crochet, but I would say team context specifically with Roberts and Eloy going down. I, I like the pirates way more than I like the white Sox right now, which is surprising to say, but very true. Yeah. And crochet is kind of tough because like, I think he's like insanely deceptive and I really love that combo that, you know, slider fastball combo and how it's deceptive to the plate. But then he was just sitting around the plate and I was literally talking with someone. I'm like, my God, your crochet is amazing. And then he ends up just being around the plate and gets beat up in an inning. And that kind of ruined it a little bit. They actually, I was hoping they'd let him come back out because I had the K prop at five and a half over. It finished at five because he was just a little bit, a little bit walky, a little bit all over the zone. But I, I think at this point, Jared Jones has separated himself a little bit. And hey, listen, maybe I'll eat my words on that trade, the very first trade video where I put him in there. Uh, I did point out, I think, like maybe over time, you know, you give it a couple starts and you sell high, but maybe it'll never be a sell high. Maybe he's just going to be awesome. <laughs> who, who is awesome, by the way? Shoto Amonaga tossed four scoreless innings against the Dodgers uh, before the rain delay, which was stupid. 43 pitches. He got those 12 outs. He was striking out guys again. Looked great. I, I am. He's one of my biggest movers in my dynasty update. That's coming up. He looks phenomenal box. He's looked great. And you know, this, this start shortened because of the rain, uh, they had a rain delay in between. So they pulled him after four, but he, he has looked amazing. Uh, ride this heater. I also love how sloppy he looks out there. He looks like, you know, skinny Bartolo a little bit. He's got the real loose Jersey. It's unbuttoned too much, but he's just going out there firing bullets. So, uh, love watching a Monica right now. I do think as with a lot of guys that come over from overseas, you get this really red hot start and then you get the, the league adjusting back on him. Do you, or is there any fear for you that that's going to happen to a Monica? Like it has uh, the guys in the past. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's definitely yeah. a thing to think about. That's kind of my thing with all these guys. And that's why I would pinpoint anybody that just absolutely explodes. It's like the league's going to catch up. And what is that guy going to do when the league does catch up? That's my same argument to Jared Jones. That's my same argument to like Eric Crochet. The league is going to find those little tiny things and they're going to start picking up and how quick those changes happen and how that guy adjusts is going to be the key. Monica throws strikes, pounds of fastball, splitter looks good. I don't know. Like, if you okay, a Monica or Bobby Miller, rest of season. Bobby Miller just got absolutely lit in the second inning, but looked phenomenal. First, which one would you pick? Miller. And how big is the gap? Not enormous, but decent. I mean, you know, team context too. Bobby Miller on the Dodgers. So 
yeah, I mean, it, it's still Bobby Miller for me. I like, uh, in my, uh, is it, oh, I'm going to screw it up again. It's Imanaga, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, we're, I, I can see the pronunciation. We're going through it again. I thought it was pronounced Imanaga. Yeah, it might be Imanaga. It is my biggest struggle bus thing. On Imanaga. So, yeah, uh, Imanaga. yeah, I mean, look, um, I, I think he's going to be good, but I do think, you know, there will be a readjustment. There'll be a period where he's not so good. So yeah, give me, give me Bobby Miller. Um, I I'll, I'll take him over, uh, Imanaga, but, but it's that, I mean, it's much closer than it would have been obviously two weeks ago. So, uh, it's right there, but yeah, still Bobby for me. A couple other pitching updates. Uh, Ryan Pepio, six shutout innings and a win over the Rockies, 11 strikeouts, give up just three hits, had a 41% whiff rate, 39% CSW, and he was pretty awesome. His fastball at a 50% whiff rate. He was killer. We talked about Garrett Crochet. He had a no decision in that one. He had 15 swing and misses. That's really been kind of one of the biggest things about his game is the swing and misses. And I, and I liken, I liken that to like the deception. He had seven swing whiffs on the slider. He's a 36% CSW. He's 0.6 whip on the year. He has been awesome. Couple, uh, hopefully returning from injury soon notes, Boggs, Justin Verlander allowed six earned runs, struck out six in a triple a start over in Sugarland. He had that rehab Sugarland. start. He's going to have, uh, Oh, do I, that I, you have to well, say I'm Sugarland. just saying that's how the Texans say it. it's like Prescott, you know, Sugar oh, Prescott. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I like Sugarland though. That makes me feel happier. I live in Sugarland a little bit more. He's got <laughs> one more rehab start and then he's popping back comfort level with Verlander when he comes back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very comfortable. Verlander is such a vet. He's been through injuries and come back before. Uh, you know, uh, am I comfortable he's going to throw a ton of innings? No, he's closer to our age than he is to a rookie's age, right? So he's that's older not, than us. Is he older than us? I'll be my birthday. Sure? Yeah, my birthday's in like two weeks. Um, and I think he'll still be older than me. It's hilarious. Like after Tom Brady retired, because I always do the, the date of birth for the football players. That was the last football player that was older than us. Now yeah, I, every single football player is going to get that. I think Verlander up. might be it. I think he, uh, like, uh, man, that's going to, that might be my midlife crisis is accepting <laughs> that I'm now older than all the baseball players. I didn't think uh, that day was coming anytime soon, but yeah, I'm, soon. he's, he's outstanding. So, uh, and he's been through this before. I think we can trust him. Obviously, do I trust him to stay healthy the whole year? No, but to come back at the appropriate time, I think he knows his body. So yeah, I I'm very comfortable with Verlander coming back. Oh, Box, you are a month older than Justin I Verlander. Knew it. You I knew are it. older. I am younger. I am the young guy here. He Before is for Justin Verlander, than... only a couple World Series and Cy Youngs, and he's married to Kate Upton and has a giant contract. Maybe someday it'll all come together for him, huh? Oh, I'm glad you said contract. Uh, a couple of the other quick notes here. Nick Lodolo struggled in his rehab start in AAA, gave up uh, four runs, five hits, and two and two thirds. Eh, but he is expected to be joining the Reds rotation soon. I don't know if I'm going to throw him right back out there. So just uh, be mindful of that. A couple questions yeah. real quick I want to hit before we, if I can find the stream yard again, if I can, uh, before we move on to all the stuff here. Lucas said, um, Do I still hold Camonero? who is still on the IL box. I've been, I got kind of roasted for this in the chat the other day um, when I was like, listen, I think you can in small bench stuff. I kind of think you can move on. I like, if you can hold hold, but I don't know if I want to hold, I think it's like a month before he comes back to the majors. So that's kind of, you know, that's your choice. Yeah. I mean, it really is about how big the bench is and how often do you sub in guys? Are you daily? Are you weekly? You know, uh, the longer you can hold, the more I would suggest it. But if you need that spot, yeah, I mean, free it up and add someone actually in the majors on your roster. So uh, that has to be a personal decision, obviously. But uh, I think for the most part, I'm trying to hold him if I can. We're supportive, though, of whatever decision we are. you want to yeah. make. Whatever you uh, want to make. Yeah. Uh, Sabo, sell Imanaga for Holiday, Jackson Holiday. In Dynasty, Yes. For this yeah. season, oh my God, that's actually, t I couldn't do that right now because I think, I think Imanaga at worst it has got like a two month really good run coming up here. I really don't know what's going to happen when the league does catch up. Um, and I think Holiday, when he comes up, which I think is going to be very soon, is going to be solid. I don't think I could do that in redraft. Dynasty, absolutely. Yeah, Dynasty, it's a no brainer. Uh, I, I would say for redraft, it's tough. If the rest of your pitching staff, 
is really good. I would sell him Managa. Uh, but if your staff is questionable, you have the injuries that have been happening and stuff, hold him. But uh, yeah, I want Holiday. I mean, Holiday is going to be a stud. So if I can get him, I want him. Imanaga. Imanaga. There you go. You'll never forget it now. WNBC. Actually, that Imanaga. I need like the scared straight with like the guards it. coming yeah. in and they just grab me and they'll just be like, Imanaga, Imanaga. And I just, I just, I need like a <laughs> crash course. And like, and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. It's Imanaga. Like, I just need something like I'm that. I'm going to send cousin Donnie over to your house to wake you up every morning saying, Imanaga, Imanaga. That's what I need. Get up really early. Uh, last one. And then we're going to move on. Would you sell Ryan Pepio after that really good start? No, I don't think I would. I don't think you're going to get enough back for Pepio right now, even after the good start, to warrant selling him. So, no. Yeah, I think I uh, agree with that. Oh, Bogman, you know what time now? <laughs> Bogman and I have a longstanding good joke. Somehow, his cat feeder only goes off when he's on with me. It, it's really incredible. I don't even know how it happens, but it, it does. To no end. And uh, it, it actually it, it brings me quite a bit of joy which I just can't help. You know what else brings me quite a bit of joy, my friend? Our buddies over at Prize Picks. So that's right. You can play MLB DFS and match your first deposit up to 100 bucks. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the Diamond and Prize Picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs. I got a nerfy today. Take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one fantasy sports app. Download the app today and use code leading off for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Download that app. Use code leading off for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. That's right. Do it over at Price Picks. I've also got some fun. Uh, there's some season long stuff that they do as well that I have got rocking, and I'm excited to see how that ends up going. Um, real quick, because I have gone long on this show today, I have a the trade video out that's going to be, like I said, within the next 24 hours. Bunch of names I think you guys should all check out. One of the names on there, I want to get your quick take on this, Bogman, is Jung Hoo Lee. And that might surprise people because he has had. Um, Really not great performance. I think he's hitting like around 200. This was as I was doing the video yesterday. But I presented this because this was actually like shocking to me. Going into Sunday, Jung Lee was tied for the third most hard hit balls in baseball. He was tied with Cattell Marte. He had a 54% hard hit rate and he had an expected batting average because he was hitting like 200 of 283. And one of my big things about this is he is showing the underlining skill set of a player that actually might hit 20 homers. I thought he wouldn't hit double digits. Batting average, runs, Giants are going to do some stuff. Homers might be there. Love to see him steal. I think Jung Hoo Lee might be the most boring of boring buys right now in the trade video, and you loved him preseason. So quick take on Jung Hoo Lee. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's been hitting the ball hard. It just hasn't been going his way. So I think when you see a guy like that, you know it's time to buy. So it is the perfect time to buy for Jung Hoo Lee. Maybe he doesn't, you know, uh, have an enormous power, but if you need batting average specifically, I think he's going to end up getting it for you. So I think it's a great move to, to make right now if you can go get him. That's what I'm thinking. So go and check it out. You want to see all the breakdowns. I've got a bunch of players that you can buy on. Jung Hoo Lee as well as one of them, um, you know, might cost much of nothing. Uh, especially for the batting average side. Uh, a couple little rookie looky here. Jackson Merrill, four for four with a stolen base on Friday. He's starting to heat up. Don't let him heat up, man. Get a little bit of power, get a little bit of stolen bases. It still might end up being like 15-15. But, oh, here's one. Jackson Holiday or Jung Hoo Lee rest of season? Mm, um, Lee, I think I have to because I know he's up right now. So I don't know when Jackson's coming up. No, Jackson Merrill. You, you heard Jackson. You said Jackson. You said. Oh, did Jackson. I say Jackson? It's okay. I'm so sorry. Jackson I, Merrill, I, four for four with a stolen base. My bad. Ooh, uh, that one's tougher. Give me Merrill. Uh, give me the upside of Merrill. I think. I think they're going to move him up in the lineup, especially if he keeps, you know, doing this. So yeah, give me, give me Merrill. I wish there weren't so many Jacksons. Like Jackson Cheerio, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Merrill. Like my brain clearly doesn't work anymore. Like. 40 hit and it's just shutting down 41 is going to come Welsh over i won't here, be able to say like, anything back in my day it used to be all kinds of michaels now it's jackson's i don't there's, like it there's a lot of jackson's i don't yeah no, not a lot of chris's anymore there's a whole lot of ja i'm sorry miss jackson Ooh. um we also i know i thought joe was off today i know i'm sorry uh max meyer who joe absolutely loves went six innings 
he gave up one run, three hits on Sunday. Whiff rates are still a decent. He had a 32% whiff rate, 35% CSW, which is pretty good. Uh, but the strikeouts are still lower. Slider's still coming. He's kind of been like a two-pitch pitcher. This was noted, I think, over on uh, Roto World. But just want to throw that out there because Joe would want Max Meyer to be in there. And I'm surprised he's going a little bit into the deeper innings, Bog. So I don't know if you're big on Max Meyer or not. I just wonder how long it's going to be till he's out for the year like all the rest of the Marlins pitchers. So I, I like Max Meyer. There's a spot for him now, obviously. But uh, yeah, t tough to trust anything going on in Miami right now. I guess so. You can trust our friends over at Trophy Smack. That's right, friends. Trophy Smack, the championship trophy could be yours. You could win this beautiful custom trophy from Trophy Smack by doing one of two things. Subscribing to the Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash fantasy pros MLB. If you're listening on the podcast, if you're here, do it now. And then comment on like, any video. This video would be particular. If you guys are making comments, you guys are uh, literally getting your entries in, but you could do it on uh, any of the videos that we've got going on. And guess what? This trophy, the winner will be announced tomorrow when Joe returns. Ooh. That's right. We'll be announcing the trophy smack winner. So make sure you get your comments in like now immediately so you guys can uh, have your opportunity to win. I want you guys uh, to win. All right, uh, moving through. Three up and three down. Lane Thomas went two for three with three stolen bases. Fox, he's up to six stolen bases, but hitting under 200. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to come around. I mean, Lane Thomas, obviously, I think everyone uh, picked regression for him. His value was pretty low for what he did last year coming into draft. So it's not surprising that he started off cold, but I think he's going to get back to normal here pretty soon. So, uh, like you love to see it. Uh, Francisco Lindor had a good day, two for five Homer and a double, uh, finally picking it back up. And Zach Geloff triple Homer, three runs, four RBIs. You also had a big day from uh, William Contreras had two homers, five RBIs, three runs. Uh, he was also four for five on Sunday. On the down, Nick Castellanos, 0 for three on Sunday, has one hit in his last 20 at bats. Blech. Cal Gibson gave up seven earned runs, six in the first against Miami. And Josh Hader got the save, but allowed four earned runs in his last three innings. So he has been a wild ride. And Joe Musgrove hates him, we found out. Uh, on the injury <laughs> front, we talked about a lot of the guys. Trevor Story, shoulder dislocation. Oh. This is one that is being discussed of he might not come back this year. Like he's hopeful to come and he back. He might not that's come not back if that's the case. I mean, you know, maybe. Yeah. So I, I don't know where this team's going to go. Uh, Sedana Rafaela could end up playing some infield. Maybe he's um, been bad too. Yeah, he has. Maybe Marcelo Mayer. Maybe he's going to be a guy that they're going to look to. I don't know. They've got infield prospects. I just don't know if a lot of them are ready. Um, Abrams and Wilson Contreras both scratched Saturday and did DNP on Sunday with a sore hand. And on our Diamondbacks, Geraldo Perdomo, torn meniscus, out a month at least. It is Blaze time. Blaze and the Monster Machines, Boggs. It is officially Blaze time. Blaze needs to get to the fielding machine and, uh, you know, not have any more errors he's been frustrating recently so uh hopefully he'll he'll get it on track but this is an audition for him you know i i said it before the season i think perdomo is on his way out he's a great fielder though so uh you know blaze has to step up and play well we'll see that's right all right uh friendos you know what time it is box is not okay box when i say bets uh i'm gonna go our best bets and you go of the day say it like that okay okay so ladies and gentlemen it's time for our best bet of the day. Bets of the day. That's right. It's our best bets of the day, which we are very happy to be bringing you guys. Look at that artwork. Look at that. That is a beautiful From thing. From a while there. ago with uh, no hair there. Come I on. know. Look at that. The bet three, six, five best bets of the day. It's Bogman and the Welsh even getting the artwork <laughs> together. Uh, like I said, let's kick back on a hot streak. Let's get going. Bogman, let's hear yours. And then I will rattle through mine and I'll give everybody the leading off parlay of the day. All right, well, if you guys saw opening day, you know Kyle Freeland gave up a ton of runs in that third, um, 10 runs to be exact. I don't know if they were on the third, but he gave up 10 runs to the Diamondbacks. We've watched Zach Gallon. I know Welsh has mentioned it here and on our show and in this league. Zach Gallon has been flirting with danger. Well, they're playing in Colorado tonight. The over is 10 and a half. It's minus 120. I am going over on that game. Uh, Jose Barrios, I'm going to take the over six and a half strikeouts. Seattle has the highest K percentage in Major League Baseball so far this season. Um, I think Barrios can get six and a half easy. And then I'm pairing two. But if you want to take 
Ozuna over one and a half total bases versus the Mets. It's minus 105. He is 16 for 59. That's a 352 average with four bombs versus Julio Tehran. You compare it with Cattell Marte over two and a half. That is plus money at 110. A little harder to get, but he is hitting 378 with three bombs versus Cleveland and or Freeland, excuse me. And that game is in Colorado. So, uh, of course, not going to not going to leave without some D-backs bets here for me. There you go. What did you see? What is the pairing? If you pair Ozuna and Marte, you, I, so you know what? I couldn't pairing? get it. Oh, uh, OK. You didn't. But, but but uh, but yeah, I mean, that that is that is a good pairing, I think. It is two and a half, so it's plus money for Marte because he's been on such a hot streak. But yeah, no one's is, been hotter. This is one of the few times I'm willing to take a two and a half total base. Uh, I like it. I can definitely get down with that. The Brios one I was sitting on personally be, just because of Seattle. Um, it's not a bad bet. It's not a bad bet at all. All right, so where I'm going with mine today, that is actually my bet of the day, which is going to be on the socials. I'm going with a Nerfy. I know, they're gimmicky and whatever, but I'm going to the Seattle Toronto game. You just mentioned Jose Barrios. Well, Jose Barrios, Luis Castillo, both on the mound. Castillo looking to bounce back a little bit. Both of these teams are in the bottom eight in the league in scoring in the first inning, and both have combined for one run over the last three games. So I think the offense is stunted a little bit. I like both of these pitchers. I like Castillo to bang back, and like you said, with Barrios, the strikeouts are up. This is minus 120 over on Bet365. So that's kind of my favorite bet of the day. Uh, my second one, I'm going over to the Angels in Tampa Bay. First five total runs, four and a half under, and that's minus 125 over at Bet365. Um, middle of the pack in the league in first five scoring for both of these teams. They actually both average around two runs per game through the first five, but the Angels are bottom six in the league in OPS against righties. So against um, Eflin and then Tampa Bay is bottom 12 in the league in OPS against lefties. So there you go. That's for Tyler Anderson. So I'm going to go with uh, less than four and a half runs being scored at minus 125. I struggled with this last one. I almost didn't want to bet this, but it just kept calling me. Blake Snell strikeout six and a half under and it's 135. There's a little bit of juice on it. He absolutely can go nine 10. Oh yeah. Any of that. I absolutely can run with that, but I just don't think he's going to get there in the first start when he doesn't get 90 plus innings. I just don't think pitches. we're going to get there. Oh yeah. Pitches. I'm sorry. When he gets to 90 plus pitches, if he's under that, I don't think he's going to get there. So that's where my big focus is, is I don't think they're going to let him go ballistic right out the gates. So I think the strikeout numbers are going to be low plus Washington the lowest in baseball the last three games in strikeouts. So there you go. Um, uh, did I say Eflin? Is everybody, why is everybody pepioing? Is it Pepeo? Uh, somebody asked a question in the chat. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I'm pretty sure it's up, but that was my big thing was the strikeout numbers. Washington doesn't strike out a bunch. They also don't walk a whole bunch and it's first start. So I'm going under six and a half strikeouts. That my friend is my top three. And then if we want to play our parlay, here's a parlay I put together Boggs. It is a run line parlay. Yankees minus one and a half versus the Marlins. Cleveland minus one and a half versus Chicago. And the Diamondbacks minus one and a half versus Colorado. That pays Ooh. plus 673 on bet 365. If you want to put that bad boy together, I love all the matchups. Cleveland is kind of a sneaky one. Arizona, that's the play. You know how that one goes. So that, my friends, are all of our bets of the day. Let's look at that artwork. There you go. Hey, it's Bogman and Welsh. Bogman and the Welsh. Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's finish this bad boy up with some home run calls, Boggs. Who's your home run call today? Uh, I just mentioned it. Give me Marcelo Zuna. He is white hot right now. He has a good track record against Tehran. I think he goes yard. I like that one. You guys want to check out the board? Look at that gross board. Joey P is up there with all those home <laughs> runs. He's tied for third place with the Yankee 2-3 rules with six. Pazzy and uh, as he calls him, Boats and O's, uh, Joe does, is in the lead. Those guys are in the lead. I am absolutely nowhere to be found. <sighs> I'm on the coldest of cold streaks. I don't know how I'm going to get it going. Bogman's probably going to pass me here soon. So uh, I'm going to try to get this bad boy hot with Ronald Acuna. 
So that's going to be my I mean, easy play. <laughs> if you can get it hot with anybody, how about the leadoff hitter? He's got a half decent track record against. So you're taking Ozuna. I'm taking Acuna. We're going to tackle this Braves game. Ozuna from the Braves. He's going to get it. Let's go. I like that. All right, uh, friends, that is going to do it for the show. Want to remind you guys about a couple things that you guys can always come and check out. Let me pop this bad boy up here in the Discord. It says join today. Join the Discord chats, fantasypros.com slash chat. And a reminder, if you guys are not already, Wednesday, it's cleaning up. That's where Joe and I are going to pop in right after the show. And we're going to do a whole nother show. So if you guys want to be a part of it, we had a bunch of great people. You can actually go and reserve your spot now. And I don't know if there's like unlimited reserves. So go and check it out. That's actually at fantasypros.com slash cleaning up. But go and join the Discord today to get in on all the action. Make comments below in this video or any video for your chance to win that Trophy Smack video. We'd love for you to have that and use the promo code leading off over at Bet365 if you want to get it set. Boggs, love you, brother. It's great love to you see too. you. We'll like totally be doing a podcast here shortly. It's good <laughs> to have you in here, not hearing you talk about uh, college football, but people can always check out all your great stuff on the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. That is it. We're going to have a wrestling, wrestling with Joe tomorrow. We'll get all the hearings and happenings and go enjoy the, um, the, the, the thing. Eclipse. The eclipse. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the sunset. The thing. path of totality, by the way. Someone said in the chat. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah. That, the path of totality. Yeah, I know. It sounds like a finishing move in Mortal Kombat. Finish so. him. All right, we're out of here. We're <laughs> going to finish it up. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Enjoy some baseball. We'll talk to you tomorrow right here on Leading Off. Bye-bye. See ya.